Hi, I am Dr. Sakib Mansoor, and uh, this is my channel, Learning Anatomy. And uh, as you know, I have already uploaded a lot of portion of the uh, head and neck uh, anatomy on my channel already. And uh, now I am going to address the remaining topics where now I will sum up the introduction of head. So here we go with a three dimensional aspect of the anatomy of the head. And uh, from now onwards, I will try to include more important and new ways of teaching you anatomy in three dimensional views and the exploded models. Here I've uh, included a um, model uh, which is a uh, 3D. So this is, you know, the, the skull is rotating in the various dimensions and uh, that is the 3D module. This is the 3D rotation. You see already the skull is moving and this is the goal. Yes, again, you see, right? Here you go, here you go, right? Here's the skull rotating. This is the inferior aspect and this moving, yes, going. This is the front from that way and this is the lateral, this is inferior. This is, this is the superior aspect, you see. And this is the lateral aspect, right? And again, this coming in front. Yes, over here, this end, it stops. So uh, first of all, we'll get to the overview of the head. Head. That is the superior part of the body that is attached to the trunk by the neck. It is the center for controlling and conveying information to the body. It acts as a loading dock for the body. So it contains the brain. In the head are present special sensory organs, that is eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. Organs producing voice and expression and gateways for the intake of water, fuel, that is food, and oxygen and exhale of carbon dioxide. That obviously is the nose and mouth. This is a picture just showing this is the head, right? And uh, this is a brain contained in that. These are the eyes present in that. This is the nose, the oral cavity of mouth, this is the ear, right? And these are the various pony portion, which is going to be explained very soon. So the contents of head, the brain with the coverings, cranial vault and the meninges, ears and face. So face, contents of the face, openings and passageways that contain glands for lubrication and valves that serve to close some of them, the masticatory tools and the orbits containing the visual system. So the importance of the face is very important. Uh, the face uh, for so many specialties, some of them are enlisted over here. This is dentistry and maxillofacial surgery, neurology, ophthalmology, oral surgery, otology, psychiatry, and neurosurgery. So what is cranium? Cranium or skull is a skeleton of the head. It's a series of bones that form its two components, neurocranium and viscerocranium, right? Neurocranium, viscerocranium. Here you see this, this part, this, you see the red laser moving. This is the neurocranium, right? The upper part covers the brain. This is the neurocranium. And the lower part, this one, this is a, uh, this is a viscerocranium, right? This is the facial skeleton, skeleton of the face. This is the viscerocranium, right? So this is the two parts of the cranium, neurocranium and the viscerocranium. And these are the serrated uh, uh, structures which are uniting the various bones, these are the sutures. This is a picture, very important and beautiful picture. This is a frontal aspect, the skull viewed from the front with various bones and skull viewed from the side, with the various bones participating in that. I will mention step by step. Neurocranium. It is the bony part covering the meninges and the brain. In it are present beginnings of the cranial nerves and blood vessels of the brain. In adults, it is formed by a series of eight bones. So eight bones form them. 
So which are eight bones, this is frontal, frontal bone, then another sagittal, the suture united and the after frontal bone is the parietal bones, frontal, parietal, occipital and on the side, you check, go come, come to the side, right? Here you come, yes, over here. These are the, you know, the sphenoidal bone and the temporal bone, right? And uh, these are the various bone. And now you come to the table mentioning that this is the cranial uh, bones, which is the frontal, occipital, parietal, sphenoidal, temporal, and ethmoidal. The, the three of them are the single bones, the ethmoidal, frontal, occipital, and again, the sphenoidal. And uh, the, these two occurring in the pairs tem on each side, the temporal and the parietal, right? Sphenoidal is a single bone. It is body in the center and the greater and the lesser wings. And uh, the parietal bones on each side, parietal and temporal bones, right? You can see over the here, this is the, uh, the parietal bone. This is one parietal bone on that side and one parietal bone on the other, other side. Then the temporal bone, right? This is also on the, uh, this, uh, right, you can see this on this side, the temporal bone, right? This is the temporal bone on one side and the other side. So this was about the table. And from inside, you can see this is the, you see, this is the sphenoid bone, right? This is the sphenoid. If this is the body and this is the wings, right? This is the sphenoid. This is again the various other bones. This is the occipital bone. And this is brown is a temporal bone. So this was about the neurocranium, eight bones forming three and four, four single bones, ethmoidal, frontal, occipital, and sphenoidal, and uh, two paired bones, temporal and parietal. So Neurocranium has two parts, a roof, which is calvaria, the skull cap, and the floor is a cranial base. So this is the roof comprising of the frontal bone and the two parietal bones and the, uh, there is the occipital. So frontal, parietal and occipital. So they are formed by the intramembranous ossification. This is, then is the cranial base, base of the cranium. It is the base of the cranium. The bones that constitute the cranial base are primarily irregular bones with the significant flat portions. These are the sphenoidal and temporal bones, right? So this brownish, dark brown color, or what you ever you can call that color is a, um, this is a, uh, you know, sphenoid. Sorry, this is the temporal and this is a sphenoid, the pinkish. This is the sphenoid and this is the temporal bone, right? This is the temporal bone. This, the, you see the laser. This is the temporal bone. These are labeled over here. This is the temporal bone, right? In this color. And this is the sphenoid bone, this color, pinkish. This is the sphenoid and this is the temporal bone. These are developed by the intracartilaginous ossification or from more than one type of ossification, right? So two important bones over here. And another large bone contributing to that cranial base is the occipital bone, this bone. Then are the sutures. Majority of the calvarial bones are joined by fibrous interlocking sutures. The spinal cord is continuous with the brain through the foramen magnum, a large opening in the cranial base. Here you could see this is the foramen magnum, right? Through it, the spinal cord is continuous through with the uh, brain. We'll see the details of the foramen magnum and the structures passing through the foramen magnum in the coming lectures. It is already uploaded the Norma Bazalus in my YouTube channel. I will give the link below in my description. Here you see the sutures again, right? These are the sutures, right? This is the sagittal suture, and this is the lambdoid. Then is the visceral the facial aspect. It consists of the facial bones that are mostly formed in the pharyngeal arches. 
palms anterior part of the cranium includes the bones that surround most of the orbits mouth and the nose here you here you see that this is the orbits and this is the nose and this is the mouth and these are the various bones here you can see frontal and uh, then uh, this is the, the zygomatic then uh, this maxilla this mandible right and uh, you can see this is also included in this is the ethmoidal bone here you see on both sides and the inferior nasal concha is a separate bone right and the nasal bones right so vomer these are the various bones you could see the zygomatic bone as well so these are mentioned over here visceral three single bones being centered or lying in the midline mandible vomer and ethmoid this is the mandible right and uh, then this the vomer this this is the vomer this and then is the ethmoid not shown over here this is this is over here ethmoid showed you already six bones present in pairs maxillary zygomatic inferior nasal conchi palatine nasal and lacrimal bones then is the mandible and maxillary they contain the teeth there are the sockets present in that this is the uh, you know maxilla and this is the mandible these are the uh, alveolar sockets and they contain the these are the uh, maxillary teeth and these are the mandibular teeth these are the jaws this is the lower jaw and this is the upper jaw maxilla and mandible so they support the teeth, these bones. Maxillary are fixed to the brachial base, forming maximum part of the upper facial skeleton. These are the maxillary. They form the maximum portion of the upper face. These, right? And they are fixed to the cranium. And the mandible, this is united to the cranium by the temporomandibular joint. This is an articulation. So it, the lower jaw, it is movable. It's a very important joint. Temporomandibular joint. Features of the anterior or facial, uh, the frontal aspect of the cranium are the frontal and zygomatic bones, orbits, nasal region, maxillary, and mandible are de uh, described and uh, illustrated. The frontal bone, especially its squamous part, forms the skeleton of the forehead, articulating inferiorly with the nasal and the zygomatic bones. And in some adults, frontal suture persists. This uh, remnant is called a metopic suture. The meeting point of the frontal and nasal bones is the nasion, which is related to an obvious depressed area called bridge of the nose. And the nasion, these words are described as the craniometry. And uh, that I have uh, separate, uh, separated into a separate uh, uh, independent discussion, craniometric points, eight craniometric points. One of them is the nasion, I will show you in a picture. Right, this is a craniometric point. Frontal bone also articulates with the sphenoidal, frontal, and uh, sphenoidal, lacrimal, and ethmoidal bones. Orbital part of the frontal, frontal bone is a horizontal portion. The details will be uh, told in two various normas. There are five normas of the skull, right? You know, this is the frontal norma frontalis, and then from the lateral side is a norma lateralis, and from the superior aspect is the norma verticalis, and from the back is the norma occipitalis, and from the inferior is the norma basalis, right? So we'll uh, tell all of you these norma basalis and norma lateralis is already uploaded. I'll give you the link uh, below in the, up to, uh, the YouTube uh, in my channel, it's Learning Anatomy. The supraorbital margin of the frontal bone has a supraorbital foramen. Here you could see these features and they would be illustrated in the norma frontalis separate discussion. Above the supraorbital margin is a ridge, the superciliary arch here. Superciliary arch extends from laterally on each side from the glabella. Here is the point glabella. With, right, and the, this is the most prominent point in the in the center of the nose above this nasal bone, right? Frontal bone, most prominent point above the nasal bone. Glabella. This is craniometry. The zygomatic bones, right? These are the zygomatic bones. 
and they comprise the prominences of the cheeks prominences of the cheeks a tiny zygomatic facial foramen this here it is the zygomatic facial foramen it pierces the lateral aspect of the zygomatic bones on each side zygomatic bones articulate with the maxillary these are the zygomatic bones articulate with the maxillary then the frontal and the temporal and the sphenoidal right so a pear shaped pyriform aperture the interior nasal opening in the cranium is present here it is yes it is below the nasal bone this is a pear shaped pyriform aperture the interior nasal opening the bony nasal septum here you can see it divides the nasal cavity into right and left parts each nasal cavity and its lateral wall has curved bony plates the nasal conchi right here you can see the nasal conchi here they are right inferior nasal concha yes here okay this is the nasal conchi on each side maxillary see upper jaw i told you already these are the maxillary these are and uh, they have the alveolar processes i told you already and they are two maxillary are joined at the intermaxillary suture in the median plane mandible is u shaped here you could see this is mandible we will have a separate uh, uh, video on the mandible anatomy i have already uploaded that on my youtube channel i will give you the link in the description below anatomy of the mandible it's a u shaped bone with an alveolar process this is the alveolar process that holds the mandibular teeth it has a body this is the body and uh, the ramus on each side two ramus this is the ramus here you could see this is the ramus this is body this is the body this is the ramus and the mental foramina this is the mental foramina you could see and the mental protuberance i think i enlarge here this is important one you could you could we'll have a separate discussion about the mandible which you see over here this is the body and this is the ramus and this is the mental foramen for the mental nerves and vessels and this is the mental protuberance this is a protuberance this is a projection below the symphysis mantle the bony union where the two halves of the infantile mandible fuse this is the symphysis mantle so the facial bones number some books say the 14 and some say 15 will follow the 14 formula which is obviously visible two inferior conchi two lacrimal bones one mandible and uh, two maxillary two nasal bones two palatine bones one vomer and two zygoma and here the ear ossicles are separate six three on each side right three pairs of six in number some include these ear ossicles in that cranial bone and they make the number eight instead to six and eight fourteen so this is a uh, position 14 and 14 28 and some say it is 29 by adding another bone over here what i think it is better classification so pneumatized bones pneumatized bones are the pneumatic bones what are they these bones of the skull are following pneumatized bones which are containing the air air spaces or sinuses right which probably decrease the weight and also produce a resonance to the voice and uh, right they they are also a separate topic of head and neck pneumatic bones doing the related with the sinuses frontal sinus temporal sinus sphenoidal sinus and ethmoidal sinus and these bones the frontal bones temporal bones sphenoidal bones and ethmoidal bones are pneumatized 
So what about is you know very very important. Please focus on that anatomical position of the cranium, and we have the two reference point points. One is a Frankfurt horizontal plane, orbitometal plane, and one is a Reed space line. We'll follow both. First of all, is a Frankfurt plane. In both Frankfurt plane and the Reed plane, we follow. This is the inferior margin of the orbit this is some orbit margin this is the inferior margin and this is the external auditory meatus right external auditory meatus and what is the layout of the frankfurt's plane right this is you could see there a line horizontal line passing from the inferior or the lower margin of the orbit infra orbital margin and traced horizontally it goes to the upper side upper margin of the external auditory meatus here it goes right so this is the frankfurt's plane frankfurt's plane you can read the description inferior margin of the orbit and the superior margin of the external acoustic opening of the external acoustic meatus of the both side lie in the same horizontal plane right so this point that is follow the red laser and the this point and this is the line frankfurt's plane here you could see the tracing yes here okay so this is the frankfurt's plane and uh, then is the reed space line this point is the same lower margin of the orbit the infra orbit of margin horizontal line and this is traced back but it passes through the center of the external auditory meatus auricular point here it goes passes backwards and this is the occipital bone so the fontanelles of cranium this is the fetal skull so fetal uh, skull look like that right here you see this this is the anterior fontanel and this is the posterior fontanel here here you could see these are the you know this is uh, the coronal suture and this is the sagittal suture and here the bones forming and the, this is the frontal bone and this is the parietal bone and here in the new nate we have the uh, anterior fontanel and here is the posterior fontanel these are the parietal bones and occipital bone this is the posterior fontanel these are the membranous areas this is no uh, bone in that and they are provided uh, here for that uh, uh, to when there is the vaginal delivery it uh, allows the um, uh, molding of the skull molding of the skull so that the head of the in the head layout the head part of the fetus passes through the vagina so narrow opening so you can mold that and there are two fontanelles are that and the two are that this is the anterolateral fontanel and this is the posterolateral fontanel here this is the posterolateral this is anterolateral right and you could see a various ponder forming um, meeting this is the frontal and this is the parietal and there is the temporal and sphenoidal here you could see anterolateral fontanel and then this a posterolateral fontanel Then right, so these are uh, uh, subsequently these fontanel ossify and uh, uh, then they are these are uh, ossified at the six months and the eighteen months. Craniometry this is very important. Last point to be discussed. Craniometry. These are the measurements of the very important points on the skull, human skull, right? i mentioned uh, you about the nasion right nasion what is how it is defined nasion so nasion is a point on cranium where fronto nasal and internasal sutures meet fronto nasal and internasal sutures meet glabella i told you this is the most prominent point on the front of the skull ab above the nasal bones right So this is the tedion very very important clinically tedion very important and here this is the underlying uh, structure is present anterior division of the anterior meningeal artery right you could see over here junction of the greater wing of the sphenoid squamous temporal parietal and frontal it overlies course of the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery right 
so here is present the middle meningeal artery anterior division and uh, these are the four sutures edge shaped and these are the bones frontal parietal and temporal and sphenoidal right this is the tedion so this is the vertex the highest point on the skull where the this is the you know highest point on the skull vertex you could see superior point in middle with while cranium lying in the anatomical or frankfurt plane and this is lambda what is that with the lambda and suture and the sagittal sutures meet and the bragma where the this is the coronal suture and the sagittal sutures meet this is the bragma and the inion this is the point which is the most prominent point on the back side of the skull norma occipitalis right this is the asterion where these three sutures meet and these what are they these are the parietomastoid lambdoid and occipitomastoid these are three sutures right so i thank you very much and uh, this is the point and uh, now uh, we'll be going to uh, back to the uh, rest of the norma some of them are missing that like norma frontalis and norma occipitalis and verticalis and we'll going on to the remaining topics of the some of them are still missing i thank you very much and for my support please do subscribe my channel and uh, comment and like uh, do comment like and uh, share with others thank you very much